Well, good morning and welcome to Matins on this Wednesday of the 14th week after Pentecost. Thank you for being with me today. The scriptures we're using are Psalm number 15. Uh, we're going to finish Judges chapter 18, and we'll continue our our travel through Acts chapter 8. We're going to catch the middle section. We won't won't quite finish that chapter today. So before we do that, though, let's begin with a word of prayer. Would you please pray with me? Blessed Lord, you speak to us through the Holy Scriptures. Grant that we may hear, read, respect, learn, and make them our own in such a way that the enduring benefit and comfort of the word will help us grasp and hold the blessed hope of everlasting life given us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Alleluia. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. O come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. <coughs> Pardon me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Alleluia. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right. Psalm number 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you first chose to live among us, and in returning to your Father, you made an eternal home for us. Help us walk blamelessly in your ways, and bring us at last to your holy mountain, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, our first reading is Judges chapter 18. We're going to read verses 16 through 31. Now the 600 men of the Danites, armed with their weapons of war, stood by the entrance of the gate. And the five men who had gone out who had gone to scout out the land, went up and entered and took the carved image, the ephod, the household gods, and the metal image, while the priest stood by the entrance of the gate with the 600 men armed with weapons of war. And when, they, and when these went into Micah's house and took the carved image, the ephod, the household gods, and the metal image, the priest said to them, what are you doing? And they said to him, keep quiet. Put your hand on your mouth and come with us and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for you to be priest to the house of one man or to be priest to a tribe and a clan in Israel? And the priest's heart was glad. He took the ephod and the household gods and the carved image and went along with the people. So they turned and departed, putting the little ones and the livestock and the goods in front of them. When they had gone a distance from the home of Micah, the men who were in the houses near Micah's house were called out, 
and they overtook the people of Dan. And they shouted to the people of Dan, who turned around and said to Micah, What is the matter with you that you come with such a company? And he said, You take my gods that I made, and the priest, and go away, and what have I left? How then do you ask me, What is the matter with you? And the people of Dan said to him, do not let your voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows fall upon you, and you lose your life with the lives of your household. Then the people of Dan went their way. When Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back to his home. But the people of Dan took what Micah had made and the priest who belonged to him, and they came to Laish, to a people quiet and unsuspecting, and struck them with the edge of the sword and burned the city with fire. And there was no deliverer, because it was far from Sidon, and they had no dealings with anyone. It was in the valley that belongs to Beth Rahab. Then they rebuilt the city and lived in it, and they named the city Dan, after the name of Dan their ancestor, who was born to Israel. But the name of the city was Laish at the first. And the people of Dan set up the carved image for themselves, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, son of Moses, and his sons were priests to the tribe of the Danites until the day of the captivity of the land. So they set up Micah's carved image that he made as long as the house of God was at Shiloh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. So yesterday... <laughs> was the people of Dan wanting to take over more land than just what they had already inherited. And so they put this little army. Well, first, they sent out the five scouts who found this isolated city of Laish um, that was not living as a Hebrew city, but as a Sidonian city, um, living in their culture, even though they didn't have any dealings with anybody else. And it was clear that they were going to be easy to conquer, right? And so they, they, with these, so they they formed a a six hundred person army, and they ended up at the house of Micah, the guy who had made, um, he had stolen eleven hundred pieces of silver from his mother and gave it back to her, and she had a carved image and a metal image made, you know, and then he. He took that wandering Levite and ordained him priest over his own personal priest for his household with these idols and false gods, just uh, so much against God's commandments there, right? So then the, the scouts, right, who had found this city that they could take over, um, they also knew that Micah had this, these pagan idols and a priest. And they thought, oh, this would be good for us to have. Why should one man by himself have all these things when we could have them? So they turned aside there. They took a little detour and went to the house of the, of the Levite, which they had recognized him before, right? Um, yeah. Anyway, we talked about that yesterday. Um, they recognized probably that his accent was a little different from everybody else in Ephraim, right? So, hmm. so the, um, so here you've got this this force of warriors, armed warriors, standing by the entrance of the gate of Micah's home, right? Right. So the five men who had already met this Levite before had been there before, went and entered Micah's home and took this stuff while the priest stood by the entrance of the gate. with 600 warriors watching. You got to you got to think what what is happening here and what would one person do even against five, let alone 600. Right. So. When those five spies went in and took them, the priest said, what are you doing? And they basically said, shut up. <laughs> right? Keep quiet. Put your hand on your mouth. And, oh, by the way, why don't you come with us and be our priest, right? Be to us a father and a priest. Yeah, that's um, 
this was explained this this term father is like a spiritual father right um pray to god for us lead our worship do our do all those priestly things right which is so ironic because it's he's going to have to be a pagan priest but he's probably thinking he can conduct himself as a priest of the god of abraham but he's got this other stuff these household gods and the carved image and you know uh it's and then they say this it, this i mean you can see the logic here is it better for you to be the priest be priest to the house of one man or to be priest to a whole tribe and a clan well obviously you want to be um you want to bring god to the most people possible but this all this household gods and the carved image and the metal image all that not not good well the priest's heart was glad right so first of all because they weren't going to leave him there to answer to micah's rage for all these valuable things being stolen well now they're they're basically taking his priest too which the priest he was there because micah was paying him um yes micah invited him but this is why he set out from bethlehem in the first place to find his his place where, you know, he, he was sojourning to go somewhere where he could serve. Micah took him in. But now he's glad because now he can serve a whole tribe, right? So he took the ephod and the household gods and the carved image and went along with the 600, right? Well, no kidding. So, so they turned and departed and put the little ones and the livestock and the goods in front of them. Now, um, I'm sure there's some kind of strategic reason for doing that. The Danites put their children and their property in front where they would be safer in the event of an attack from anyone who would be pursuing them. Um, so they've gone a little bit, and the men who were in the houses near Micah's house were called out. They overtook the the dan the dan forces and so they they tried to stop them well they turn around and they and apparently micah was with them and said what's the matter with you that you've come with such a company <laughs> why would you come after us probably wasn't enough to stand up to 600 armed warriors is the point right these are the men who are in the houses near micah's house so maybe family maybe just friends Certainly they knew each other because they were going in support of Micah. And Micah's with them, right? So he says, you take my gods that I made and the priest that I made and go away. And what have you left me with? How can you ask me what's the matter with you? So it's like, did you not think I would be upset at this? Did you not think this would be wrong? I mean, hello, thou shalt not steal. I mean... How how could they possibly think that this was a righteous thing to do? I mean, I'm sure they assumed their cause was righteous, but that doesn't excuse that. So the people of Dan said to him, don't let your voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows fall upon you, right? Um, basically, they said, we are a stronger force than you. You might lose the life. You might lose your own life and everybody in your house. Like all these people that are with you. Yeah. We're going to slaughter you if you keep this up. Um, and then they just basically turn and left. Micah saw they were too strong for him. So he went back home. Well, so he couldn't reason with them. They, they, they had no sense of guilt or shame in doing what they had done. He didn't change their mind. And if he didn't, if he kept pursuing this, if he kept begging them, they were just going to kill him and everybody with him. So he saw very quickly he lost and he better just accept that. So the people of Dan took what Micah had made and the priests and they came to Laish. This is <clears throat> that town that they, that they were, their spies said, we can take this over. It's good land. It's quiet. It's surrounded by mountains. This is a good place for us to take to a people quiet and unsuspecting, right? These people were just living life. 
And the people of Dan struck them with the edge of the sword and burned the city with fire. Right? They conquered this city. There was no deliverer because it was far from Sidon, right? They, they were living as Sidonians, right? But they had no dealings with anyone. And it was too far from the big city, the capital. It was in the valley that belongs to Beth Rehob. Uh, yeah. So, um, right, it was mountains blocking access to other places. Um, yeah, so this is just describing where it was. And then they rebuilt the city and took it over and lived in it, right? So, so they burned it, they destroyed it, they kicked the people out or killed them, and now they have it. And they renamed it Dan after their ancestor, who their tribe is named after. Dan was born to Israel, right? Um, son of Jacob by Rachel's maidservant, Bilha, Bilha. And so he was one of the head of the 12 tribes, right? Uh, the head of one of the 12 tribes, I should say. So he was, you know, this is one of the tribes. They were entitled to an inheritance, but not this way. They already had those other two cities, Zora and... I can't say it. Zora and Eshtaol. They already had some inheritance. They just got greedy. So it originally had been named Laish. And at one point it was called Lasham, but they renamed it Dan. And they set up the carved image for themselves. So they're maintaining the pagan stuff that Micah had had, had made. And Jonathan, the son of Moses. All right, now. Um maybe the son of Manasseh. Interesting. Jonathan, the son of, this is, this is the, finally we get the name of the Levite, right? That's the Levite that Micah ordained to be priest. Jonathan, son of Gershom, son of Moses, and his sons were priests to the tribe of the Danites until the day of the captivity of the land. Okay. So, um, Jonathan was possibly a grandson of Moses, maybe. Um, this indicates these events happened early in the time of the judges, okay? So in order to be only two generations away from Moses, it would have happened. Yeah, so the order in which we're reading these stories and judges isn't necessarily chronological. That's the point, all right? Um, the day of the captivity, probably not... The Assyrian conquest of 722 BC, probably the capture of the Ark of the Covenant by the Philistines in 1060 BC, um, which we'll read about in 1 Samuel, starting in chapter 4. So, so they set up Micah's carved image that he made as long as the house of God was at Shiloh. Um, so... Yeah, so you have here a contrast between pagan images and the true God, right? Two different places of worship, the idolatrous, idolatrous shrine and the true tabernacle, right? The true tabernacle where the Ark of the Covenant was. Um, and it stayed at Shiloh until the time of Samuel, okay? which is when it was captured by the Philistines. Um, so <clears throat> we are going to finish Judges right here. There are still a few more chapters. Um, Judges 21 is the last chapter. Um, so if you want to finish the book of Judges, you're welcome to, but we will be in Job chapter 1 starting tomorrow. And we're going to take a journey through Job for at least probably the next two weeks. So, all right, let's move on to Acts. We're in chapter eight. We're going to read verses 14 to 25. Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. 
Now, when Simon saw that the spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. And when they had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so this is picking up yesterday. We had just met this guy, Simon the Magician, who's used to being um, practicing magic and amazing people and being famous, right? Everybody paid attention to him from the least to the greatest. But even he, hearing Philip, right? Hearing Philip preaching, even Simon believed, and he got baptized too. And he followed Philip, and he saw the signs and wonders Philip was doing. And even Simon the magician was amazed. And that's where we pick up, right? So the apostles at Jerusalem heard Samaria had received the word of God, right? Every, and this all happened because Stephen was martyred. Saul approved of the execution. And he was ravaging households. And so the disciples, the thousands who have, of new converts had been scattered. One of the places they were scattered was Samaria. So Philip is up in Samaria preaching. And so they sent, they heard this, so they sent Peter and John to go check it out, right? These are the, these are the founders of the church after Christ. Christ told Peter, you're the rock on, on this rock, I'll build my church, right? So, so Peter and John came down from the city on the hill to Samaria and prayed for the people that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, Philip wasn't doing baptisms the right way. Um, you're supposed to be baptized in the name of the triune God, in all three names, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Only baptizing in the name of the Lord Jesus, well, there's no spirit there. So, they hadn't received the spirit yet. Um so, and let's not forget, Samaritans and Jews hated each other, okay? The Samaritans believed that they worshiped the same God, but they didn't have any desire to go to the temple. They believed that the true place of the worship of the God of Abraham was on the, on the hill where they were instead of on the hill where Jerusalem was. And there was all kinds of bitterness between them. This is going to pull them together right? So Peter and John comes, come to their, the city of Samaria, pray for the people there who had been baptized. Um, and they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit, right? So in addition to being baptized, and we still do this today. Now, I don't lay hands on anyone in a typical baptism, but we do mark the sign of the cross on their foreheads, and in the, and when we do that, and I use anointing oil, many, uh, most Lutherans do, Catholics certainly do, other denominations do. So you say, and you, you state the person's name, and you say, say their name, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. That is when that happens, right? So this had not happened yet. So now they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit right? Prayed for them, laid hands on them. And Simon saw this, saw that the spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands. So he wants to buy this from them, right? I'll give you money. Can I have this power too, right? Give me, give me this power also so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit, right? So he's, he is used to having supernatural power, so I don't really blame him for this, but it's not coming from a good place, okay? He was delving into supernatural stuff that God has forbidden. God says, that's my turf. If you have to 
if you have to go in that territory, then you let me handle it, right? Cast out demons in Jesus' name. Jesus will take care of it, right? Peter said to him, may your silver perish with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. It's a gift. It's freely given. Peter was basically rebuking him so he could make sure that he would know this is not acceptable behavior for a Christian. He also probably wanted to purchase this, what we would call apostolic authority. Peter and John had authority over the church as it grew, right? So you have neither part nor lot in this matter for your heart is not right before God. Wow. So Peter condemns this lust for power right away. And he warned Simon that he had sinned. Let me, let me back up here. There's a note here I want to talk talk about, right? The gospel and its blessings cannot be bought or sold. God's blessings are, uh, and his authority are gifts of God, right? God had commanded his people to provide for servants of the word, right? God tells his people, you, you need to compensate your priests, right? And that's that's true in the Old Testament. It's true in the New Testament. We see it in different places, right? So yes, they're supposed to be supported so they can do this work, but not like this. This is not how you use money in a faithful way. And get this, this, this is... Um, the early church fathers attribute the beginning of heresies to Simon. Oh, that's, that's probably this, this Simon here, Simon the Magician. It's probably an oversimplification. Um, yeah, Simon became known as the arch heretic and the attempt to buy authority in the church ever since has been called simony. Wow. How's that for making a name for yourself that you don't want to make simony named after him? So um, Peter's warning to Simon is similar to John the Baptist's warning to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, right? Repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you, right? You're not asking for this power to do good things. You're asking for this power because you like having power and you like amazing people and enjoying fame. I see that you are in the gall of bitterness, the... yeah. And the bond and in the bond of iniquity, right? This is sin that's that's committed intentionally, knowing it's a sin. This matter is so serious that Peter anticipates swift judgment. So Simon recognizes this. Um, Peter saying he's enslaved to sin. So Simon answers, Pray for me to the Lord that nothing of what you've said may come. Don't let this happen to me. Please pray for me that I will be delivered from it. Unlike Ananias and Sapphira, remember the couple who withheld, uh, sold property and withheld part of it greedily, right? And lied to Peter about it. They were not repentant at all. So Simon immediately asks Peter to intercede on his behalf and remove the, the curse that's likely to come upon him. So at least he is, he shows an intent to repent. Hopefully that's what indeed happened. So when they had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, so they finished doing what they were doing, Peter and John, they returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. I assume that means on their way back. All right. The church continues to grow even to the Samaritans who the Jews did not get along with. All right. Let's conclude our matins. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, this was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. 
in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us without all doubt to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that following his steps, we may steadfastly walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome in adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. That concludes our matins for this Wednesday. Thank you for spending this time in the Word with me, and thank you for giving back to God a little bit of the day he's given to you. Um, matins again tomorrow. So, um, so far, so good. The week looks like we're on schedule. So, um, um, I would uh, encourage you to take a look at the last couple of pages of the book of Judges. Um, as we as we wrap that up, we're we're going to finish that and move into Job, but just kind of see how the book concludes and then um, how it follows the pattern that we talked about at the beginning of the book. And then uh, we'll move into Job and have a whole different way of looking at things. So <clears throat> Job is an interesting book. I'm glad we're tackling that next. So again, thank you for being here. Uh, I wish you a blessed rest of your Wednesday. And until we can be together again, whenever that is, may God bless and keep you.